You guys have been in finance, obviously, for a very long time. What do you want to see change? What is the right path to be over the next five to ten years? I, I think continuing on Josh's thought, um, you know, what he's talking about in terms of taking control or, or decentralization, in my opinion, is just another word for liberty. You know, we're here in the United Kingdom where, uh, you know, man and liberty, there were some important moments like the Magna Carta. And I think that, you know, man ultimately thrives when we have liberty. And what's very important to understand today is that, you know, earlier before we started this interview, you were talking about some of these social networks and how they're pervading control of our content. Well, I think there's never been a point in history where governments controlled our economic future more than today. And they do so through this mechanism of money. And the money itself is so controlled uh, that I genuinely believe it, it, it impedes on our ability to have liberty. Because every decision that we make is, is based on the currency that we control. Every wage contract we have with our employer is denominated in this currency, which is inexorably linked to the activity of the government. Whether the government does well, collects enough taxes to pay the budget, or whether the government does poorly, you know, is corrupt and oppressive, everyone's wage contract, everyone's pricing power is based on that ultimate currency. And if you study the history of monetary policy or money in general, as we have, we're both scholars of monetary history, what you'll find is that for the majority of time, humans, when they have liberty, decide that money should be A, a commodity rather than abstraction, and B, it should be gold. And when you get into sort of, once you, once you cross the first hoop and you realize that money should be a commodity rather than an abstraction of the mind, human mind, at that point, it, it won't take long for you to reconcile that it should be gold. Because you only have 92 elements on the periodic table, and most of them would fail the test of, of being a proper money. Most of them either cost too much to produce, uh, or, or don't last long enough, or exist in very large quantities. Um, and, and gold really just strikes the right balance. It's so rare, but it lasts forever, and it's something that's equally distributed in the world. So that's why gold always ascends as the primary money. And in my opinion, if we, if we want to get the world back in the right direction, we need to see more decentralization, but we also need to see more of a focus on this idea that decentralized monies correspond to more liberty. And, and obviously that's the biggest problem I think we have today.